to another episode of the Dusty Thunder Podcast. This is going to be wildly different, number one, because I'm not set up in the studio. I'm at my desk like a normal content, but also we have a very, very special guest with us. We have Beyond Beautiful. Welcome. Welcome to the show, Beyond Beautiful. Hi, thank you so much. I'm glad to have you here. Thank you for agreeing to be here. Uh, if this is the first time that you're getting introduced to her, she's another TikTok creator that does AITA stories as well, plus a bunch of other stuff. I have so many questions because I haven't had like a conversation with with another creator that does the kind of stuff that we do. Um, so this may turn into like a two hour conversation with just me me asking you questions. I'm going to try not <laughs> to do that, but it it very well could happen. So let's start off with this. How did you get your start on TikTok? Okay, so I'm a longtime Reddit lurker. I've been on Reddit forever. And one day I came across a story that just just filled me with rage. And I, had, I couldn't keep it to myself. I had to tell everybody that I knew about it. And I got online and I made a video. And everybody was like, you're doing so good. You should do this. You should do this. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that, y'all. No, I'm not going to do that. And then... I kept doing it. And here we are. <laughs> so, so how long did it take them to convince you once they said you should do this uh, between them saying that, and then you being like, fine, I'll do it. How long was that? I want to say, honestly, it took me maybe a week to start reading the stories, but about a month for me to actually start putting my own little ad libs and stuff into it. I used to just gotcha. read the stories and turn it off. It was awkward. They, those videos are so awkward. They're so awkward. I used to just read it and that would be it. You know, a lot of people still do that. Um, and whenever I got started, Candy Thunder and and Ava, one of our daughters, they talked me into doing it. I, you know, I, I have not been a Reddit lurker. Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd end up I'd end up going there for for various things, but but wasn't like a dedicated Reddit lurker. Um, yeah. But they talked me into it and I I read the story and then gave feedback. And afterward, whenever we started posting stuff, people were like, oh, I really like how you do the feedback. I'm like, I didn't know that's not what people did. Uh, it's still <laughs> st- <laughs> like I didn't know. But a lot of people that do the the Reddit stories will just read the story and that's it. Uh, and I'm like, where where's the fun in that? I a lot of people act it out, which is cool. But I think the feedback is one of the most important things. Yeah, it's one of the like the most fun parts about it. Like, well, to me, hearing like people that agree with me and then the people that disagree with me, that's the best part. To me, that is the best part. How do you let's let's go down that road for a second. How do you handle it when someone disagrees with you? Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Like you can agree with me. You can disagree with me. That's honestly okay because no one's going to agree with me all the time. I never, you know, declared to be the smartest person in the world, never said I was always right. So, you know, and different um, like upbringings and different things that people have gone through give other people different perspectives. So I kind of just be like, all right. But sometimes I just ignore it because a lot of times people argue for the sake of arguing and not because it's an actual reason to argue. But all in all, it's just like, all right, you guys be nice, be respectful, say how you feel. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. You and I are in a very, very similar spot there. I think it's frustrating when you see people who think just because you have an opinion that differs from them, that you're wrong or evil or yeah. like, it, it, it's not all black and white. It can't be just just what you believe is 100 percent concrete fact. You have to at least be open to hearing other people's viewpoints on things. Otherwise, you're not growing as a person at all. But man, I know you hit as many as we do where people are like, nope, you're just wrong. You're oh, wrong. Absolutely. Anytime somebody starts a comment with you're wrong, I'm like, oh boy, here we go. No, my favorite it's, ones are the I respectfully disagree. And then they go into a tirade of disrespect. It's like, okay, <laughs> well, disrespectfully, I don't agree with you. <laughs> I, I'm respectfully about to be disrespectful to you. That's uh, yep. that's that's what they mean. <laughs> everything, what everything before the word but or Anything that's followed by the word "but" is just bullshit. Yeah, Isn't what, yeah, something like that. It's like, did you not? That's crazy. Listen to me talk in this video, and you really thought she was gonna come at me like that? Okay. So, so there. That starts another another kind of interesting subject here. Uh, I feel like myself. Um, I'm much more tame, or I've had to become much more tame on camera than I am off camera. I am way more inappropriate off camera. <laughs> 
than I am on camera. Uh, but for the sake of not getting canceled or not dividing an audience or anything like that, we never get into like anything political or religious or mm-hmm. there are some topics we just won't touch. Yeah. How, how much of a difference is there between you on camera versus you off? Honestly, I probably cuss more off camera. On? Probably, oh, off? No, off camera, which yeah. is probably hard yeah. to believe. <laughs> but um, honestly, the, the me that you guys see on camera is like 98% the me that's walking around here in real life. Like the part that you guys don't see is I'm an, actually, I'm a really shy person. I do not do well in like social interactions. People have come up and recognize me on the street and immediately I'm the awkwardest person in the world. <laughs> immediately it's just like hey (laughs) hi so that's one of the things that you guys don't see um i'm weird i'm really weird but i 100 am far i'm keeping that off of the internet (laughs) like i'm probably the weirdest person you know i I am i'm not gonna get into that i'm just gonna leave it there i get it i get it i think uh (laughs) there's something about doing this that is a lot easier for maybe introverted people or shy people or awkward people because yeah. like I'm we're talking right now. And, and even if I'm doing a live stream, I'm, I'm talking to chat and I'm talking to a camera, right? I'm not yeah. talking to a group of people who are in person here. And it's, it, there's something that's a lot easier to do. It's, it's a, once you're comfortable with yourself, you're fine. You don't have to be comfortable yeah. with a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. So, I so agree. when you've been spotted out in public, how? Uh, let's talk about that for a second. It where I live uh, here in you know Joplin, Missouri, Southwest Missouri. Uh, it's rare, like extremely rare. No one really knows, uh, you know, what we do or that this is really a thing. Um, does it happen often? Do you get spotted? People say anything? Um, not so much now because I recently moved. But a few months back, I lived in mm. my hometown. So I did get spotted every time I went grocery shopping. Every time I went grocery shopping, I ran into people. Like I had one person follow me around the store, but it wasn't like she really just wanted to confirm that I was me because because like I said, I'm an awkward person and I don't like to be stared at. So I see somebody staring at me and I was like shooting her. I was shooting her the dirtiest look. So if y'all come across pictures of me glaring at somebody, I was trying to get fish sticks. Okay. (laughs) She was following me. (laughs) She was. And then when like I finally just got like set up and I turned and looked at her, she was like, Oh my gosh, it's you. Yeah, girl, next time say something. Like, don't just follow me, you creeper. But yeah, I normally it's just I'm just caught off guard. Someone caught me digging through the toy bin at Target. I was looking for toys for me. I wasn't shopping for nobody's kids. I was just digging through the toy bin and she walked up and I had an arm full of toys. And I was just like, Hi. Just hello. Mm-hmm. How you doing? <laughs> She's like, I just want to tell you that I think you're awesome, girl. You you awesome too. And then when she walked away, I looked at my boyfriend. Did I just tell her she was awesome for saying hi to me? He was like, yeah, okay, <laughs> that works. That works. And I had you did it right. That yeah, my name that's a good her. response. <laughs> like I told her she was awesome for <laughs> yes. telling me. Yes. Okay. All right. But not so much now since we moved away. I kind of just I really stay in the house. I'm a homebody. I am a major mm. homebody. I love being in my house. Which that works out well for being a content creator when your content is based like in your your home studio area, right? Like I get that. Absolutely. We're we're home buddies too. Home bodies too. Um it I, I'm thankful that that we can do things like go to Target in our pajamas and yes. uh, and not get spotted or or if anybody <laughs> does spot us, they don't they never say anything. It's extremely, extremely rare. I can count I can count the number of times we've been spotted and somebody spoke up on one hand, like a couple times, um, really? which is cool. I, I like it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, Tony, Tony Spark on our team, by the way, he wanted me to tell you to follow at Tony Spark underscore on TikTok. Yeah. He Tony you, wants Tony. the fame like he wants it. Oh, Tony. And she said, I got you. Uh, she. He Tony wants the fame. Tony wants like he wants to wake up to hordes of people trying to get his autograph. Oh my god, that would just make me so stressed out. Yes, I like I've had he wants it. Ever asked me for my autograph? But people have asked me for pictures. Like, can I take a picture with you? And it's like, girl, I have a bonnet on. 
slippers and a whole t-shirt but yeah come on like come on baby let's take a picture so it's a picture out there let's get it i look at my best in the middle of the night outside the grocery store because baby girl wanted a picture <laughs> that's awesome you did it though you know what i mean absolutely uh, you absolutely did it. It, my my biggest fear is that um somebody's gonna meet me in public who's who's a fan and be disappointed right <laughs> like because I never want to disappoint anybody, especially if they're a lover of the content. I'm like, you don't want to meet me in person. Like I, you know, it's just, just love what you love on the content. And that's it. Because in person, I'm probably just an even bigger asshole. So (laughs) no, we'll just leave it there. I, my thing is, I don't want to meet anybody that doesn't like me. Like someone that used to be a follower that got blocked for being disrespectful Mm. or something, because I'm not going to stand here and explain to you why you got blocked. Because on my account, we we right. hold accountability for our actions, myself included. So I'm not going to sit here and talk to you. Whatever you did that got you on my radar, that got you blocked, that's you. And I just, I don't want to deal with that because I'm going to be, like yeah. you said, a bigger asshole because I can be mean sometimes. <laughs> and that's that's you. You should have left me alone. I, I would be like, dude, I don't remember. So many people get muted or blocked because they just don't behave or do stupid shit, especially on lives. Like, yes. I, I'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about i'm sorry uh my mods on my live are raw they are vicious (laughs) it's like they understand how i want our section to be safe for everybody like no matter skin color race political whatever if you want to come in the live be in the live but keep that stuff out of it you get one chance they warn you and then after that that's it i get off of my lives all the time to emails and DMs on my Instagram from people or comments on my TikTok videos, you blocked me or I was muted in your live. Now, I really don't care even less than I did when I was on the live. I've seen you get blocked. You think <laughs> I can't see the comments? I've seen it happen. <laughs> like, I don't care. Yeah. But then I've had people threaten to fight me. Someone wanted to beat me up. Like, the messages that I get for people not wanting to hold themselves accountable for their own actions is crazy. It's insane. And it's like, y'all gonna come to me the loudest person on the internet about accountability and the consequences of your actions to whine about the consequences of your act. Girl, I don't care. <laughs> I do not care. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you say, say whatever shit you want out in, out in your own little bubble. But as soon as you jump on my live or in my comment section, now you're in a space that I control. Exactly. Uh, and if you do something to get you booted, that's a you problem. So yeah, exactly. yeah. luckily maybe we haven't heard uh well, maybe a couple of times of people like protesting. We have accidentally muted or blocked people <laughs> a couple of yes. times because they were replying to bots or something. That happens. Like yes. it just happens. Yes. And I have uh, to tell them you guys don't reply because then you get on my mods radar and then they mute you. One of my yep. mods muted and blocked my sister. <laughs> it was like oh. an accident. Yes. She came into the live and I think she called me by my first name. And like my name is LaQuanda. And I don't mind people knowing it, mm. but we're not friends for people to just be jumping in my life, shouting out my name in all caps. And she was telling someone and someone was telling her yeah. not to do it. And her response was basically like, I'm her sister. But, you know, I just wanted to let her know I was here. And one of my moms was like, we don't care. And they didn't they didn't even pay attention to the second comment and they blocked her. She called me like, um, somebody oh. just blocked me like mid live. I answered the phone like Y'all, my sister is calling me. <laughs> Somebody just blocked me. It's like, whichever one of you guys did it, please, please go fix it. Please. Because the tongue lashing I just got when I was innocent, please go fix this. Oh, man. Yeah, they they blocked my sister so fast. It's like, oh, well, girl, don't come in here acting crazy because we don't do that here. So we don't do that. Right. Exactly. That would have been my first question. It would have been, did you deserve it? Like, did did you uh, you do with my sisters for sure? Yeah, exactly. Um, my sister, uh, I have two sisters, but one of them showed up during our 24 hour live, uh, a little tipsy and, oh, and randomly jumped on camera and is now known as tips. She's tipsy thunder. Now that's, that's her name on it. content. And, uh, that's awesome. and, and, and the people are like, we need more, we need more tipsy thunder. I'm like, okay, well, we'll have to get her <laughs> sauced up and do this kind of thing. Cause she lives in, she lives in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, so that'll be fun. What has the the whole journey been like for you? We talked about kind of the starting process, but but how has this whole journey of being a content creator and growing your channel, how has it changed things for you? Um, honestly, I don't I've never even thought about it, but like at first glance, it's 
I don't know. I can't, I don't even know what words to put on it. It's something that I never truly thought would happen to me. Like, like I said, I just posted a story that I, that made me angry and it blew up. And now this is what I do. Like, I don't do anything other than TikTok and it pays my bills. It's taking care of me. I'm helping, helping family members. Like, I absolutely love it. You know, I left, I've been able to do this for the little bit of time I've been able to do it. It's been eye opening for sure. <laughs> like, I really don't know even how to put it. It's wild. Place. It's crazy because I never. That's amazing. I never. Yeah. My account literally blew up overnight. It blew up overnight. I had been able to, you know, I got my own little group. I had about 15,000 followers that I accumulated on my own, but a creator that I was following followed me back and then posted one of my videos on her Instagram. And I went from like 15,000 to 80,000 overnight. And it was just like, okay, nice. so this is a thing. Like this can happen. Like this is something that I can do if I just shake Heck the yeah. off and just do it. And then it just kind of gave me that confidence boost a little bit. So it's definitely helped me build my confidence. I feel great knowing that there are some people out there that I've actually helped. Some of the, the OPs from the stories I pulled from Reddit have emailed me yeah. personally. Like I, I seen your video on my story and I wanted to thank you. I've gotten an update. This is what happened. And it just makes me feel good knowing that I'm helping people in my own small little way. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you hear a lot of that in, in comments too, from people where, where, you know, things that you've said or, or some of the stories that you read have, have helped them with their own personal lives, not OPs, but just people learning how to deal with things. Do you hear a lot of that? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, cool. um, I see in the comments more so in my lives because, you know, some people, they like seeing things more direct. They want to feel like someone's talking directly to them. So in my lives, you know, I'll yeah. just, I'll go off on some rant about something or something that frustrates me and it's information that people need to hear. And they'll tell me like, I really needed to hear this today. Thank you. Cause this is something I just needed someone to, to say out loud. And it's like, absolutely. I am the person that will yell at you. Just let me know. I like to yell. Just let me know. Hard loving with Laquanda. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I like it. There is a certain element to it where, where, you know, even we hear about counselors and therapists actually telling, telling their patients to, to watch this kind of content um, and to, to use it and use it to strengthen their daily lives, which is crazy, right? right? Like, that's crazy. But um, if it works, but it, it's, we're, we're like the no BS TikTok mainstream media version of, of therapy in some yeah. way, which is cool. It's awesome. And that's I'm too crazy. crazy to be anybody's therapist or counselor. Oh, I'm actually in school to be a counselor. Are you really? That's amazing. I am. I am. So wait, wait. Okay. So at some point you're going to be like, Oh wait, hold on. You don't, you don't want me to yell at people <laughs> yeah, as a counselor so, or, or maybe that's no, okay. Maybe that's just your gonna, brand. That's your shtick. People are going to pay me to yell at them. <laughs> They're going to pay me to be firm and let them know exactly what it is that they need to hear, regardless of how much it hurts their feelings, because they need to hear it. I, that sounds like the dream job. It's the hot air, wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's all for it. Heck yeah. That's awesome. Uh, so one one last question for you before we dive into a couple of stories. Uh, Candy Thunder is, has handpicked some stories for us to go through. Um, I know you do TikTok. What other platforms do you do content on? I honestly don't. I only upload my content onto YouTube. I upload my lives only all of my lives go onto my YouTube and I just have an Instagram page, but where I mostly post my content is strictly TikTok. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so I, I don't think the ban will be something that you or I end up having to face. Uh, but if somehow we wake up tomorrow and, and it's just gone, have you thought about what you're going to do? I'm going to get a job. I'm going to get a job. No, <laughs> no, I know. that's what all my followers. No, are like, uh, no. Um, honestly, no. I don't no. know. I have no idea. But realistically, I mean, your girl's got to pay bills somehow. Somehow, and yeah. I've I've only been getting paid from TikTok for the last like maybe six, seven months. So this is really, really new to me. So this isn't something that I've seen making you know my career. So I feel like because it's been less than a year, I'm 100% able to just move on to something else. Yes, I will be crushed because yeah. my account is, I've worked so hard on it and we are 
just so close to making it to a million followers. You're so close. But yeah, you are. You are so damn close. <laughs> yeah. So I'm of course I'll be sad about it, but I'm gonna get a job. I got bills to pay. <laughs> I hear you. I, I think um a lot of people talk about, you know, YouTube kind of being the backup for mm-hmm. for if something happened for their content. Um and, and I think that's part of our plan. We're we do post content over there too. So that would be the first stop to pivot over that way. And and you can monetize on that side with the content like you're doing right now. And they have lives, they have all the same stuff. So um I hope that heaven forbid something end up happening. I hope it doesn't, but if shit hits the fan in some way. I hope we see you there and not, uh, and not just move on to another chapter in life because you're damn good at what you do. So Thank hopefully you. we don't end up having to have that conversation ever. So I know your followers didn't put you up to this to convince me to not give up and just go to YouTube. Cause that's what it sounded like to me. <laughs> It sounds like you put it on a little thick, Mr. Thunder. <laughs> hey, I'm just planting seeds. I'm making sure, making sure we've got Beyond Beautiful no matter what happens in the freaking marble halls of insanity up there. I mean, who knows right. what'll happen? I, I don't think it'll be something we run into, but um, what in we case. find ourselves thinking, yeah, we find ourselves trying to think of backup plans upon backup plans no matter what, which is crazy that we have to do that. And also, right. backing up just a little bit, um, I think a lot of people still look at, at this, like what we do, um, as something that's not a real job. Um, this is a lot of work. I'm uh, trying to get my followers to understand that all the time. Like, this is not something, you know, it's more than just sitting in front of your camera and reading a story like that. It doesn't yeah. just happen really fast. This is actual work and it takes time. Yeah, it's work. I, I I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably one of the hardest jobs there is because it's it's like being a small business owner right because you it's all on you uh-huh. it's on you to figure out how to grow how, mm-hmm. it's on you how to figure out you know how to make a living doing what you're doing it's on you to think about okay if the government does this what am i going to do to continue my channel or it's it's very much small business owner like but it is all on you and it is so much work it is Absolutely. very much a job and for people to say it's not real not a real job just pisses me off you know don't let it make you mad i just be like okay well the light bill i paid with this not real job money i put food in my house (laughs) with the not real job money (laughs) my my not real job money spent like your your job money so i (laughs) I don't understand the uh the not real cheeseburger that my not real not real yeah. money came from from the not real job. It tastes pretty t- pretty damn good. So uh, it's sapling. It's I guess just there as good it is. as your cheeseburger. Okay, uh, first story we're going to dive into is from Am I the Devil and is titled "Am I the Asshole for Assuming He Was on a Date with Somebody." This is humiliating, absolutely humiliating. I started dating someone that was friends with my friends. I could see him all the time at work because he worked at a bagel shop on campus. I liked to go to. I had a big crush on him because he was cute, funny, and a bit mysterious. Found out from a friend that he said I was cute, and we met each other at a bar later on, and he asked if I wanted to go out. We've been dating for a few months, and it has been amazing. But his one problem is that he's a bit too mysterious. He keeps a lot of those close to his chest, and it's very obvious that he doesn't easily let people in. He has friends with multiple casual friends I have, and they remarked that he doesn't open up easily, and they realized he talks a lot, but doesn't say much about himself and his life. I had no problem with this. I like the idea of working to earn someone's trust who doesn't give it out easily, but it was difficult because I was really curious about him, and it puts me on high alert. Well, I asked him to hang out this weekend, and he said he can't. He already has plans for the weekend, but hopes I have a good one. I asked what he was specifically doing, and he said something And he said, spending some time with family. Great, right? Well, the next day I see him at a bar at midnight with a girl. She looks 21. I was immediately super jealous. And they looked very chummy with each other. He was talking to her very animated in a way he doesn't do with me. He got up to buy them drinks and I'm pissed. My friends are hyping me up to tell him off and I decide I'm going to do it. I said, nice date. And she's ugly too. What a catch. Way to downgrade. He looked at me and I immediately felt bad about what I said, but I wasn't going to take it back. Then he said the craziest thing. I'm sorry. I hate even writing it. He said, that's my kid's sister. I knew it. I freaking knew it. Which (laughs) OMG. 
<laughs> OMG, WTF, I died. I genuinely did. I apologized and said he had to understand. It was a suspicious, a suspicious <laughs> picture, especially when he didn't tell me directly what he was doing this weekend. He was upset. He was like, what the f*** is wrong with you? You called my sister ugly. Thankfully, she didn't hear it. They talked and he left afterwards without even looking at me. He hasn't messaged me all weekend. Is this my fault or is it understandable considering the circumstances? Am I the asshole? What do you think? Yeah, she's the asshole. Girl, you just called this man's sister ugly because you were jealous and insecure. <laughs> There's nothing. She, she needs to just go ahead and bury her head in the sand. There's no coming back from that. You called my sister ugly. <laughs> That's that's going to be the topic of conversation every time she leaves a room if they were to get together. Isn't that the girl that called her ugly? Uh, no. Yeah. Insecurities be insecure. <laughs> no. And it'd be funny if uh, if he looked like his sister. You know, siblings can look right. alike. So that would be great. <laughs> they probably were. They were probably you know what? Twins, identical. Oh, that would be hilarious. Gosh. You know, the, the part of this that that red flags me out the most is that this was before they even had their first date, right? This was like, they finally <laughs> talked about hanging out. They were going to do it. Like, like she asked yes, him to hang out this it. weekend for the first time. And then she sees him at a bar and she's like, cheater. You're with well, you guys haven't right? gone on a date yet. You first got no all, space I'm to be able to cheating. talk to this guy. Well, like, I don't know. Oh, that's terrible. Well, she's just going and delete <laughs> yeah, his yeah. number. Forget that that man exists because there's no coming back from that. There's you, you're embarrassed. You've embarrassed yourself. No. You talked about his sister. You confronted him about something he wasn't even doing. No, he's not. He's never going to call him again. Ever. This, not, that's not what he meant when he yeah, said have a good week. That would be. <laughs> he didn't mean stalk me and then confront me uh, like hey. I, yeah, like we've been married for five years and I snuck off with my mistress. She's not even pretty. <gasps> that would be that would be um, <laughs> yeah, that'd be a major red flag to me if I if a girl was flirting with me and uh, and and I thought maybe I had an interest in her and then she showed up and did that shit. I'd be like, yeah, uh, that's nice and all, but you crazy and um, <laughs> please please lose my number. Just just don't. You would Honestly? never knowingly enter a relationship with someone who did shit like that. Absolutely not. But my thing is, his sister was way too calm for me because she got too many words out. She got to say, "How? No, you're not gonna call me ugly." And uh, and I'm with my brother. I'm gonna pop you in the mouth because first of all, don't disrespect my brother. Don't come over here yelling. You could have came over here with respect. Yeah. You want to call? I'm ugly. Like that's that's my that's what I'm stuck on. <laughs> like that's really what I'm stuck on because she probably wasn't even ugly. She was just insecure and jealous. Like woman. And we ain't oh, even sure. out yet. Yeah. No. 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 Mm. -mm. See, girl, they don't. They don't stand. Oh, up and luckily the door. sister didn't hear it. She didn't hear it. Well, I think it's a. You know, the sister didn't hear it because the the dude he walked away to get them drinks, right. and that's You're when that's right. when this she girl confronted OP him. confronted her. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. See. No, so all he okay. could do is be like, "Yeah, that's my sister. That's that's not cool. Don't call my sister ugly." And uh, yeah, we're done here. So you call my sister ugly though. Like I, I can't get past that. Thanks. You don't even know this woman. Too. Uh, uh <laughs> The amount of confidence that she had that she was right is insane. But you don't know anything. Right. You don't know anything about this man because you said yourself he's mysterious. So for you to automatically assume, bro dodged a nuclear missile. He did. He really did because yeah. you said so yourself and he was mysterious and you didn't mind that, but you accused him because you didn't know something about him. No, and wrong. She's, she's the asshole. Absolutely. I, I only like the sexy part of the mystery, not the, <laughs> not the, like the mysterious part that makes me, that makes me worry. I don't like that part. Right. Girl, get Dear out of here. God, that's uh, yep, exactly. Okay, bouncing to the next one here. This one, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do this one. She said it's skippable, but we have time. This one yeah. is from the AITA subreddit and is, am I the asshole for saying just don't come to my stepmom when she and my dad told me she didn't want to attend my high school graduation with my mom? My parents divorced when I, 18 male, was three because my dad was having an affair with my stepmom. So 15 years ago, my mom and stepmom were work rivals and had a strong dislike for each other even before the affair. 
There's always been speculation that this is why my stepmom willingly became the other woman, because she disliked my mom. I was aware of this and not because of my parents, but because of drama that would kick off with my dad's side of the family. And I was present for some of my dad's relative speculations about this. My parents did not get along after the affair and tensions were high whenever my mom and stepmom were in the same room. My stepmom had three pregnancies that ended in miscarriage. The first two, I guess, were typical normal miscarriages, but the third one caused my stepmom a lot of medical issues that led to her being infertile. So she and my dad never got to have a living child together. After the third miscarriage, my stepmom wanted me around because she wanted to feel like a parent and she wanted to know she would still have me. She and my dad asked my mom if they could extend their time with me. And my mom laughed in her face and told her she didn't care what she had been through. She would not let me be used as a Band-Aid. My stepmom argued that she deserved compassion for what she was going through. And it would be good for me to give that little to get that little extra of attention and love since I wasn't going to have siblings ever. My mom told her she'd never have compassion for her and didn't feel sorry for her at all. She told her she didn't deserve to be a mom after taking part in the end of my stability within my family. She did blame my dad, too, but that has never been focused on as much as as much by my dad and stepmom or his family. After that, my mom and stepmom were never in the same place together. They had third parties take care of exchanges of me until I was old enough to hop out of a car and into the home I was returning to. Once they realized I knew details of what happened, my dad and stepmom were very vocal about being cruel or hurtful to my stepmom, and that was why they weren't ever in the same room together. A few times I picked up on their desire for me to hate my mom for them, but I don't. I try to stay neutral, which my mom encourages, but if I have to pick, like with this, I'm hashtag team mom all the way. I'm graduating from high school in a couple of months and my dad and stepmom brought up that my stepmom doesn't feel like she should be around my mom and does not want to be there with my mom. They told me they feel if it would be best if I make it clear to my mom that she can't be there. I told them my mom will be there. Then my mom, then my stepmom told me she can't be in the same room as her after what she did. So I said, just don't come. I told her I wasn't going to beg her to be there. I wanted my mom there and they weren't going to stop me. They asked me how I could say that, knowing my mom treated my stepmom that way, and asked me to be more compassionate. Am I the asshole? No. I feel like compassion is a word that OP's dad and stepmom recently learned. Because how are you going to ask for compassion (laughs) from the very woman that you guys cheated on? Like, y'all literally effed around on this woman. And you want her to be, you go into the wrong person. You better go to the church house. You better go to your friends because you don't come to the woman that you scorned asking her to be compassionate towards your towards your situation. Don't nobody care. Don't nobody care how you feel. Mm-mm. Now, Opie is not the asshole at all because the fact that they want him to tell his mom that she can't that she shouldn't come to his graduation so his stepmom can be comfortable is crazy. My flabbers are gas. Right. Because yeah. that's insane. You're my flabbers are gasted. Uh, yeah, I like it. Also, what does it say about dad? What does it say about dad here that he's like that he's like yes, yes, you should, uh, yes, you should, you should not want your mother to be there and to your child to be like yes, we want you to hate her. When mom is what like, I mean, just be neutral, just try to stay out of it. But I mean, dad's a big, you know, ray of black because he got had an affair with mom's work rival. Like if your wife had a work rival, you are that's the only thing you hear about when she comes home from work. She cannot wait to unload on you about how much the bitch that she hates did whatever she did that she hated at work. And this man willingly slept with this woman, whether she approached him or not. So we already know, you know, dad's a dumpster fire all on his own. Like he sucks. They yeah. all suck. He's a great role model. Right. right. He's just, really, just, really good role model material. Just terrible. I love his mom though, because she's encouraging, a- encouraging him to be neutral. Like she knows that his place yeah. is not between the three of them and their feud. And I absolutely love that. Because she's better than me. She's better than me. <laughs> like I uh-uh. <laughs> I, Cause I always have something to say, so she better be yes. Yeah. So you know what, son, ignore it. Cause me, I'm mean, going. You go tell them that I said, and then I would probably fall with something disrespectful. So. I get in this kind of thing. I mean, to destroy a family and then expect compassion, and you know, miscarriages. I, I would never wish that upon anybody, but 
But to use that to say, I deserve compassion because of this, you don't get to do that, especially especially to the, the woman you scorned. Like you said, you don't get to do that. I don't think you get to use it as a as I get to do whatever bullshit you want for free card, period. Absolutely and if you're asking not. somebody to disallow their mother from being at their graduation because you had some miscarriages, like the math ain't math in there. You know what I mean? No, but it's like she really Doesn't thinks that she's more entitled to be there than his mother. That his mother, like, I'm not comfortable, okay? As the person that's uncomfortable in the situation, the power all relies with you. You need to not go. You don't feel comfortable in a room with her, then don't go. My answer would have been the same. Okay, well, look like you're not coming. I wasn't right. giving you an invitation in the first place, so I don't know what made you think you was coming. <laughs> Mm-mm, no. Because the kid said that I'm he sorry. Been that, that, that invitation didn't say. <laughs> it didn't say yeah. you could come. Uh, to the invitation wasn't dad and name. mistress, bitch. Exactly. Exactly. This kid has been I like, aware of things going like down for for a long time. I, I like how she she didn't want to spend more time with him until the failed miscarriages. And then she's like, well, I really want to know what it's like to be a mom. So how about you stay around here more? Oh, uh, I'm I'm your fourth choice. OK, uh, yeah, the fourth no choice, not nah. the first, not the second, no. not even the third. And it wasn't until the third where she was where she had some issues on the inside and wasn't able to have children. Now she wants to be a girl. Get out of here. I don't even like you. I'm 18 at this point. Yeah, I don't even you've been around 15 years. 15 years. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, no, no. OP is absolutely not the asshole. And I love that he's so mature to be 18 years old. Because he's he's not, he's not saying that. Yeah. Like he's got the restraint of, I don't know, because he's not saying anything. He said that he knows they want him to hate his mom <clears throat> for them. But he's literally not saying, he's not saying anything to defend mom. He's not saying anything, you know, against them. He's just like, this is not my place. Way, way more mature than I am. Even today at my big grown age. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you. What a <laughs> shitty situation for a kid to be in too. To be, and I know a lot of kids are in that situation, but to be used as a pawn for 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 split parents to do vindictive shit to each other. I'm like, man, that's yeah. just, what a stressful time for kids. Sucks. It definitely okay, sucks. Okay, so we've got an NTA there. We're going to bounce to the next one here. we got a bunch of short ones. Uh, Okay, the next one is from Off My Chest, and this one is, I found my wife's secret Google account, and I'm sick to my stomach. I, male 36, met my wife Bailey, female 33, nine years ago through mutual coworkers, and we hit it off immediately. I fell absolutely head over heels with this woman. She was everything I was looking for. I had gotten out of a toxic, Mm -hmm. dare I say, abusive long-term relationship right before that with a woman Bailey had been acquainted with, but not friends with. I had her blocked on everything and had no contact with her since breaking up. We got married right after the tail end of the pandemic, bought our first house together and started trying to conceive. That was difficult because Bailey has PCOS, but last year she finally gave birth to our first daughter. I'm having a blast with being a dad. It's kind of a dream come true. I finally got my happy life with my perfect wife, my perfect wife, until last Monday. My laptop's battery shit the bed, so I opened up Bailey's work tablet with an attached keyboard. You could set it up like a monitor to check on some tax stuff. She wasn't home. It's just me and the baby, but we've never asked permission to use each other's devices. We've always just been open like that. There's nothing for us to hide. That's what I thought. When I opened up the internet, I noticed she had the incognito tab open. Never in a million years did I expect to discover what I did. My wife has a secret Google account with a photo album saved called XX. So I clicked on it. Did I discover an affair? No. Nudes? No. In this Google album were over 300 photos, 348 exactly, of my ex. The woman I was with right before I met Bailey. The woman who tormented me and made me feel worthless. The album said it was started back right around the time I met Bailey and started dating her and was updated as recently as two weeks ago. The photos range from candid shots with family to pictures of her at work functions. There were even pictures from her yearbook. I don't know how Bailey could have found her high school yearbook photos, photos from vacations, ID photos from work, pictures of her and crowds, screenshots of videos and screen recordings of videos, just her. The other people in the photos would be scribbled out or the photo would be cropped and zoomed in just on my ex. There were other disturbing things I found, too. There was another album with just zoomed in pictures of my ex's hair. Come to think of it, Bailey had recently started wearing her hair different, and my ex had a very identifiable hair type. 
There was another album with screenshots of comments on social media. And of course, I can't find them because I have her blocked like Facebook group. She's in and public posts. And my ex is very low key on social media. I can't imagine the lengths Bailey went to to find them. My ex literally lives in another country now. There were also different links to to the exact outfits she was wearing, like very specific blouses and trousers you'd have to really go looking for to find, a specific water bottle I remembered purchasing, and identical hiking boots and sandals. So basically, my partner of almost a decade has been single white femaling my ex-girlfriend, has secretly stalked her to the point of buying her exact clothes and changing her hair, and now I'm starting to realize Bailey's new interests over the years were just my exes. Bailey has turned herself into my ex. Everything feels like a lie. Our love feels like a lie. The things we share feel like a lie. I threw up and had a panic attack. I looked at our daughter and felt betrayed. I haven't confronted her yet. I don't know if I want to. I want to run away with our daughter. I want to print out all the pictures, leave them on the table and disappear. I don't know what to do. I just want to throw up. What? Wow. You know, if there wasn't a kid in the situation right now, it's really it's a really easy path, right? You're like, oh. Get out. Just pack the car, throw your shit in the car. Don't even spend time making it look nice. Throw everything in there and you run. Turn off all device like IP tracking, location tracking shit you have and just get out of there. But, but they have honestly, a kid. But, but like going back to your theory, like even without the killing, like, would that even work though? Because this girl is better than the FBI. That's what? true. That's that true. work. <laughs> like, like the CIA uh, on shit on her. Ah. Uh, that is insane. Maybe, yeah, this is this is not a fun position to be in. I think the only choice he has is to reverse Uno her ass, right? Mm-hmm. He needs to start start doing research on who her ex was and become him. <laughs> That's the only solution to this, right? Like what? <laughs> I would start talking about I would start trash talking things about my ex. I remembered my Oh ex yeah, and see how she reacts. I hate women with dark brown hair. <laughs> Damn it, she has freckles. They drive me crazy. They make my ass itch. And I would just get angry about things that I know she's focused on. But you know, my ex had a cop just like that. And honestly, I hated it. Because it just made her look funny. And honestly, I think it's a top. Because she looked a little strange too. Like I would just start talking about things that I know for a fact that she's done all this research on. Because no. Yeah. yeah. Girl, what are you doing? That That is insane. I'd be so afraid. I'd have to call my mom. Like I would have to call my yeah. mom. Like that's a that's a call your mom moment because you know there's some things that only parents can help with. I'd have to call my mom. <laughs> like mom, what do I do? <laughs> what do I do? Yeah, as, a, as a parent receiving that phone call, I'm like, I don't oh, know. This is crazy. You know like, what? Honestly, call. Okay. I don't even know if I want you to come home because she's gonna follow you. Okay. She, you're gonna bring that crazy to my front door. <laughs> Call Hollywood because this needs to be a movie, and then come home. Uh, my God, that's that's complicated. So I, I guess OP is feeling like the only reason that they're together is because he was something that the ex had. So so Bailey had to have him too, only because the ex had him. I would confront her. I mean, you have to confront uh, her because you genuinely need to know: Are we t- together? Because you want to be this girl or did you truly like me? Of course she's going to lie, but I mean, at this point he know her better than we do. So he'll be able to pick through her lies. Yeah. He'll know whether she's, you know, saying things out of emotion or she's saying, saying things that she truly, truly feels, but he has to confront her. Cause that's weird. This, who is this yeah. girl? Then who is she in re- in reality? Who is Bay? Ain't got her name, Bay? Oh. Bailey. Yeah. 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 I don't think she so- knows. Because she's lost in this charade of being the ex now. She doesn't, there's no way that she knows who she really is. It's a girl you Part of me was like, maybe, maybe, maybe she did all this shit just because she thought that he loved his ex and she wanted to make sure that he loved her. But it, it seems like her obsession goes back way before that. So no, it's just a, it's just about Bailey. This is some like stalker kidnappy kind of stuff. Uh, I think it kind of, yeah, no, that's, off- that's scary. I think it kind of started off like like how you said she wanted to do be this girl, so she ended up being with him, like to be with him. But as time went on, she like you said forgot who she was because he said the most recent update was two weeks two weeks ago. They are together and have a whole kid. You won. 
you won what are you doing why, right. why are you st- yeah. why are you still carrying this on and i think it's to the point where she can't help it she but th- that girl needs yeah. to talk to everybody she needs to talk to the the therapists the scientists the astronauts all the is <laughs> just a line of all the is need to come and talk to her <laughs> This girl needs to talk to everybody. Just (laughs) fill her calendar up. Just get the line started. Get the president on the phone. Something. The Russians are going to be involved in some way. This is this is wild. Yes, this is not okay. (laughs) That girl needs help. Try an exorcism. You know. Uh, Yeah, yeah. she's definitely lost here. And I guess you'd have to ask. You'd have to ask. Like, okay, um, when did this start? what's going on? Is it something you just lost control of? Because there is there is a possibility here that it started off as something innocent and snowballed. She lost herself and now she physically like can't stop. Can't stop. And in that yeah. case, I'd be like, okay, we're going to get you in some therapy and uh, we're going to start working on this. But the other side of it is this is just scary as shit and you'd want to protect your kid and get the hell out of there. So I, what, what, would, <laughs> what would you do? He needs to call his mama. He needs to call his mom. <laughs> That's the only advice I got. Call your mama, sir. Tell and then, somebody. Call your call your mom and then get all the ists lined up, right? All get the them all. Ists. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's a disturbing one. Okay, we we have a couple more to go through here. All right, next one up is from AITA and is, am I the asshole for leaving my sister's bridal party after she told me that our dad's girlfriend is the maid of honor? Well, this doesn't sound like it can go wrong at all. For context, when I, 32 female, was a teen, my parents ended up getting a divorce. My mom got full custody because my dad said he needed time off as he couldn't take care of us while everything was still raw. When he was around, he spent most of his time with my sister, Maria, 25 female, rather than me, as she needed him more. This was a sore spot for me growing up, especially when he made an effort for Maria, but never for me. He has tried to reconcile with me, but we aren't on the best of terms, and I've since grown to accept it. He ended up meeting Jane, 57 female, at a bar, and they hit it off. While I personally don't mind him moving on, Jane was obsessed with the idea of reconciling our relationship. The few times I've met her, she would get into arguments with me, claiming that my dad only wants his daughter back and to give him a chance. Last summer, we were having a dinner at Maria's flat when she and dad were discussing an upcoming family vacation. When Jane asked what I thought about the trip, I informed her I wasn't going. She immediately started asking me questions about it. I was purposefully icing her and my dad out. I told her I was a grown adult, and if she didn't like it, she had someone else following her like a puppy. My dad got involved, and I ended up choosing to leave, but not before she shouted that I was my mom's lapdog. Maria ended up kicking them both afterwards, too. I haven't spoken to either of my dad or Jane since that day. With Maria's upcoming wedding, I've expected to see them there, and I've made my peace to just stay as far away as possible. But a few days ago, she told me she had a maid of honor in mind. She claimed Jane has been nothing but sweet to her, and that she felt like she was her close friend. As she was talking, she said that Jane was really sorry and was trying to reach out to apologize, but I cut her off. I told her if she wanted her as her maid of honor... It was her wedding and her choice, but I personally didn't want to be in a position where I have to keep interacting with her over every little detail. I would still attend the wedding, but I would not be a bridesmaid. This made her tear up. She begged me to reconsider as she really wanted to be a part of her big day. I told her I will, but just as an attendee. In the end, she said it's okay, but asked me to reconsider. News got to my dad and Jane, and now my dad has sent several messages telling me that I'm acting childish and that I'm ruining Maria's day. Am I the astronaut for leaving? I feel like this way we can avoid any potential conflict, but I also want to be part of her day. So the question was, am I the astronaut for leaving my sister's bridal party after she told me that our dad's girlfriend is the maid of honor? I don't think she is. I truly feel like this is like the most mature choice for everybody. She does. She knows that there's going to be an issue. She knows it. And even if there isn't going to be, she's not open minded enough to be like, maybe there's not. So she doesn't want to be a part of it. And I think that's absolutely her choice. Like everybody goes up in flames when someone is upset at the bride for not choosing them to be in the bridal party. But then everybody gets upset and they always want to say, you know, well, it's the bride. It's her day. You know, she can have who she wants. But everybody also wants to get upset when someone decides to decline it when they don't want to be in a a certain position. Like this was an offer, not a summons. 
I don't have to do this. I am well within my right to step down, to choose to not to want to be in this situation. I don't like this bitch. I don't want to work with her. Point blank period. And I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you have to choose between there being drama before the wedding, which is what's happening now, or mm-hmm. there being drama during the wedding, which is what would happen if she were a bridesmaid with this Absolutely. harpy that is the maid of honor. I, I think she's doing the right thing for her sister by, Absolutely. by making the drama outside of the wedding. And But dad, dad really pisses me off here. He sucks. Dad to just be like, I'm not going to call and ask like, hey, you know, what has you feeling that like this? Let's talk about it to immediately just say you're acting childish. Like, cool. Way to find a solution there, pops. You uh, you're you're on top of solving all the problems. Good job. You firefighting it away. When dads act like that, to no, she's like doing one the right of their thing. children, I always wonder, like, is that really your daddy? Is that your daddy in always DNA? Is that your dad? Because when the divorce happened, he needed time to cool off while things were raw, as mm-hmm. if things weren't raw for their mother and the children as well. But he only reached out to one child. He only, you know, bothered to reconcile the relationship with one child. He was always closer to one child. Why? You know, like I know parents often, more often than they should, choose a favorite child, which sucks. But this man is not even trying to hide it. He has a pure dislike for yeah. one of his two children. And I'm wondering why. What did she do? What did you, who did what that's yeah. got you upset? So I don't think she's as that's a good point. Maybe he just had an sucks. easier connection. Was the sister younger? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the sister was younger and it may be because she was the baby that may, that, you know, in his feeble little worse. mind, maybe, maybe that was the reason, but him being a coward from the rip and saying, Oh, I need a break. A break. Cause everything's too raw. Like you said, it's raw for everybody. Yeah. No one else gets a break, dude. You don't get a break from being a parent. That's not how parenting works. So him right. saying him, just taking the break or saying that he needed it. I lost all respect immediately. Yeah. Immediately, he's yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm, I'm wondering too if Maria, uh, the younger, the baby girl sister here, who is having the wedding, I'm wondering if this is contingent on some kind of financial help she's getting from daddy and from from Ooh. daddy's toy. Maybe, but Jane, I mean, the dad Jane's is always getting yeah. closer to her, so you know, like this yeah. is probably not even something that she's ever even worried about, but. She may have a good relationship, you know, so that like this, I feel like the younger sister, she may only see she's seeing things through rose tinted glasses. She's seeing things the way that they're spinning things because she wanted her sister to reconsider. But in the end was like, okay, she accepted it. The all the drama and the heat is coming from the dad who's come like the sister was like, all right. I mean, I want you to be a part of my day. Absolutely. But I respect your choice. The dad is the one that's upset because once again, the daughter he has no relationship with is doing something that he is. Okay. He needs to grow up. He needs to move on. He can't control it. But but to say that you're you're all for reconciling and rebuilding the relationship, and then for this to be your reaction, you're acting childish. Like that, that's not how you rebuild a relationship by doing more not of the same all. shit. Not by not all. being understanding, by not being a father, it's not how you do it. Fail dad. Mom, NCAOP right. fail dad. <laughs> yeah, you know, so Candy Thunder and I talk about this quite a bit. Whenever people do shit that we don't understand, I'm like, everybody thinks they're doing the right thing. There may be some really warped reasons that they think they're doing the right thing, but I'm sure he thinks he's doing the right thing here. He's just not thinking about other people. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe that's the difference is, you know, people who think they're doing the right thing who are doing harm to a lot of people are only thinking about their specific motives and not how it affects everybody else. Absolutely. And he, yeah, he's winning right now. He's got his, his, his new wife is happy. She gets to be the maid of honor. His, his baby, baby girl daughter's getting married and, and his wife is the maid of honor and you know, everything's great. Uh, If just that one kid would just stop being a thorn in his side, boy, you could have the picture perfect life. Right. If you just do what I wanted you to do, everybody would be happy. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> Except you, but yeah, that doesn't matter. Everyone else. Oh, he sucks. Dickhead, father of the bride. That's what we're going to name that one. All right. Yep. We got our last story here. 
Right. The last one is from AITA subreddit as well. And is, am I the astronaut for calling my coworkers baby name idea dumb and making her <laughs> cry? Oh shit. <laughs> am I the astronaut? So my work, my coworker is pregnant with her first baby. And she asked me yesterday about my thoughts on her baby name and things didn't go well. We work in a hotel that doesn't get much traffic, so there's always a lot of downtime to sit and chat. We're not friends, but since we're both girls in the same age, 23, we do speak a lot and we're on the same shift together. She asked me if I heard of the name Venus, and I say yes, and she says she's going to name her daughter that, but add an A at the end, so it's Venusa. She said Mm -hmm. that it's so exotic and unique sounding, right? I said, I said, no, it sounds like the already existing name Vanessa. She got upset and said, no, it doesn't. And that she's asked her boyfriend and her parents say they all like it. And it's a name that's they've never heard of before. I said, it sounds like Vanessa and that it's kind of dumb. It's kind of a dumb name to give someone (laughs) since every time they say it out loud, people will call them Vanessa and it will always be misspelled. She started to cry and said, great. People are already insulting my parenting choices and that I'm being a bitch and left the shift early. Now our other coworkers have been messaging me saying I'm disgusting for making a pregnant woman cry. Am I the asshole? I was being honest since she asked me. Don't ask me a question if you don't want my answer. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. That's funny. But the crazy thing yeah. is I didn't think Vanessa. I thought Medusa. <laughs> you said Vanessa. I thought Medusa. Like, I thought I thought I thought yeah, that's what I thought too. Huh. That's not cute. So, not cute. so even if she just had it spelled when when teachers are trying to read it in school, they're going to say Vanessa or or Vanessa. Like what? This is this is a it's a dangerous name, right? It's yes, it's like, a dangerous name to choose for a child. But like you said, don't don't <laughs> ask my opinion if you don't want an honest opinion. There's a big difference between people chiming in who you haven't asked and giving their opinion it? on a baby name that you've already chosen. And we read a lot of stories about that. But yeah. when you ask someone specifically what they think, you can't expect them to just grin and lie oh, and not tell you the truth if they really see a problem with it. I'm going to tell you that. No, girl, I don't like that one. I don't like that. What's the second option? <laughs> Immediately. My next question. What's yeah. the second choice? Oh, you don't have a second choice? Oh, okay. Maybe you should pick a second, third, a fourth. Because um, kids are cruel. <laughs> kids are cruel from first grade until the rest of their life. <laughs> people are going to make fun of your kid's name. Don't do that. Don't, yep. don't do that. Yeah. Like, people forget all the time that they are naming people and not animals name your name your your fish venusa don't name your daughter your daughter venusa name your your venus flytrap venusa like we don't name our children <laughs> venusa venusa that is oh my gosh. I'm, all, I'm all for unique names but i think you got to look at this as a parent and I, she's she's 23 right i mean that's young it's i, I think everybody the, wants the to need to be unique young. and different exactly yeah it's it, that need is so much more prevalent when you're younger that it's just clouds all clouds all logic and you don't think about what's actually going to happen with it down the line if anything op did her a favor here and pointed this out because everybody else like oh it's so pretty it's, it's so pretty so no she hate me too then because there's a problem that's, that's ugly i'm just gonna assume she's having a bout of the mommy brain because girl the new set that's ugly like, you know what? I got you a gift. We got about seven baby name books right here. I'm just going to go on and send them to you. All you need to do is read through them and pick <laughs> one. Highlight 15 of your favorite from every book, and we will we'll narrow it down from there. Vanusa? Vanusa. I can't. I can't. This, this is my little baby yeah, girl. This uh, is ba- not- baby Medusa. No. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I purposely accidentally. And it'd be even better if she had a uh, a look for uh, for a baby gift. I got her a little uh, a little snake wig. It's yeah, right? it's fitting, right? Oh, snake. Right. Gosh, Vanusa. Why why are people getting her like her whole room is themed in snakes and stuff? It just it takes an in- inevitable path, right? And I'm later on in life, she just embraces it. Please don't. Yeah. Do baby like that. Kids are kids are cruel, and adults are even worse. By childish, rude adults are Agreed. worse. 
Like, so kids are going to torment this baby growing up. She's going to may or may not end up with an employer that's going to purposely say her name wrong. Teachers use the, uh, names as a power trip. They purposely, you know, mispronounce Truth. kids' names when they when they correct them. Like, no, nah, don't set your baby up for up. Don't, don't do that. You can literally spell that's this rough. in there. a different way. Spell it with a Y. I don't know. But, like, they can figure it out. But Venusa? No. <laughs> No, name her Venus A. Like, (laughs) change it. Do something. Make it better. But Venusa is not it. I can't. I refuse. We're going to have to start a petition because no. No. (laughs) Start a movement. There's probably people out there already named Venusa right now. They're like, damn, I told them. I I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> that happens every time. There's Surely not. But, but if you're watching this name. and you know somebody named Venusa, let us know. <laughs> it right? has to be. So I, mean, I didn't mean it's, nothing. I didn't mean every, nothing. Every name out there is taken. Every time there's a story that I read that like focuses on someone's name and I yell out this person's name, my comment section floods with like 57 Amelia's. <laughs> every Kennedy in the world. It's like, oh my gosh, me watching this story named April. Like, girl, why are you here? You ain't never been here before. Why are you here? It's like, I sent out a beacon. Every person named Vanessa is going to comment on this damn... Yes, we're going to attract all the Venusas in the world. We're going to find them. Oh, and we're gonna, but the good thing is they're going to tell us about all the complications they had growing up and in school and still have because of that name. They're going to validate it. There's no way they wouldn't. There's no way you could go through life with that name and not have trouble. There's no but way. You've never had a single struggle? Not one. No one at the DMV mispronounced your name? Okay, I don't believe it. <laughs> the doctor don't just come out and call no out the last name instead of the first name? Like, yeah. that's me. When I grew up, right. nobody ever said my first name even going to the doctors now they would just come out and yell out my last name it's like yeah i'm right here i'm coming i'm coming (laughs) it's me right here (laughs) if anything just your first initial and your last name like l yeah uh not even they don't even they don't even acknowledge my first name it's just last name i'm not even gonna try that do you uh did you ever find yourself going by like a shortened version did you did you develop a nickname as you as you grew um No, I like my family calls me a nickname, but I'm really anal about who calls me my nickname. So only my family and people I consider my friends can refer to me by my nickname. But I was that asshole child that corrected people when they when they pronounce Mm. my name wrong. My name's Laquana. That was me. My mama taught me (laughs) that your name is your title and people aren't going to get it right unless you make sure they get it right. So I left no room for error. None. Even in school, got in trouble for not answering the teacher for purposely mispronouncing my name. Like they had to call my mom to the office and everything because I refused to acknowledge her. That's not my name. I don't know who you're talking to. Hey, take notes, Venusa. You're gonna you're <laughs> gonna need you're gonna need to be using the same method growing up. <laughs> uh, my mom did not play about that. She came to the office like, "Well, I don't see why I'm here. Did you call her name? Well, that's not her name." <laughs> right. left. I went to school with the biggest smile. I couldn't wait to get to school the next day. She's gnawing the teacher face, like you trying to get me in trouble. Oh hell! It, did they did they do it again? Did they butcher your no. name again, or did they get it right? No, nope, never again. Right? I feel like it worked. It's a line of respect. Yeah, mm-hmm. that works. My mom, it's, that's my mom that's a thing of respect. Out. That's awesome. We have five kids, so we're we're crazy. But uh, whenever whenever Candy Thunder and I first got together, um, her daughter Ava was already uh, five, I think, and we went trick or treating that year. Uh, and she had a peanut allergy, and it was it was so freaking funny because she she was the kind of kid who would have been like you and would have been like, unless you're calling my actual name, I'm just not going to answer you. Very very opinionated, but very proper, like very outspoken, mm-hmm. very very well-spoken five-year-old kid it was it's just like a little person like a little 30-year-old woman in this person she would go door to door trick-or-treating and if they tried to hand her something that had peanuts in it she'd be like i'm sorry i have a peanut allergy can i take something different it was it was hilarious i love that so much yeah it's great (laughs) she said y'all have poison Uh, me today (laughs) <laughs> she just throws it back at him oh takes the rest God. of the bucket and runs yeah Thank you. now in contrast we so our kids are are uh they go from 22 years old now all the way down to um our youngest is getting ready to turn three so we've got this huge mm-hmm. spread of kids uh the toddler 
is the mouthiest little shit out of all of them. She okay. she would be the type to take that whole candy bucket and run. Um, she's she's as sweet as can be sometimes, but I call her a sour patch kid because uh-huh. you know she's she both sour and sweet at the same time. That's yeah. that's her, and she's very very mouthy. Toddlers are gangsters. and her name's Navy. So it, dude, toddlers are mean. Yeah, like, they're they're just yeah. mean. See, I I feel like I'm mean. But if your toddler came up and said something that was true in a mean way, I burst into tears. And I'm going to tell. I'm going <laughs> exactly. to tell. Like, bro, she was really mean right now. And I kind of want to go home. <laughs> I'm going to go home now because she hurt my feelings. Because kids are honest. Yeah. So whatever she said was true. <laughs> like, And I need to go home and self-evaluate and make some changes in my life. Because she didn't need to come at me like the way she did. Kids a little, gangster. little cute Yodas walking around here. Yeah, she's she's gangster for sure. Um, I, I think there's also this thing where, as a toddler, they're they're self aware now, so they're starting to test boundaries of like of, of social mm-hmm. social instances, right? Even when yeah. we play with her little figurines and stuff, now she makes one of them do something mean just to see what will happen, and then <laughs> we kind of work our way through that. But she's <laughs> she's experimenting with some social scenarios now, and I'm like either. This kid is going to be just, just like brilliant. She's going to be just like so well tuned and brilliant and, and emotionally mature. Or we're raising a psychopath. She's and I don't, to I don't know what's going to happen here. <laughs> she could be. She very well could be. But she's cute. You know, so uh, you know, I mean, she'll be able to pull it off for a while right at least. <laughs> yeah, kids are mean. <laughs> I used to work with kids before I started doing TikTok. I worked with kids. Yeah. I used to be a preschool uh, special education class aide for five years. That's awesome. I did. And kids are mean. Just like my autistic babies humbled <laughs> me every day. Every day. Oh, yeah. They humbled me. Like, yeah. The, yeah. Mm-hmm. I love my babies. Every single one of them. But they were mean. They were mean to me. I got bullied quite often. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. But they were cute. So. Well, and- your spectrum kids have even less of a filter too, right? So they're just yes. like, they, yeah, they will say whatever comes to mind. And then laugh at you when you tell them that makes me sad. <laughs> they laugh at you. Like, right. That's your problem. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't want to play with you anymore. I want to go read that book. I don't want to sit here and do blocks with you. Sure I feel is. <laughs> My kids are mean. The the real gangsters are the autistic kids and toddlers. Now we know. Like that's if you if you ever need somebody to be gangster for you, that's that's who you need. Go on and get them because they not they're not going to back down. They're not scared. They don't have no sense of fear. Not <laughs> like, at all. They're gonna say what needs to be said and do what needs to be done, and then they're cute, so they get away with it. Everybody's happy. Exactly. Like, <laughs> Everybody's happy. It's like having a little doll, having yeah. a little doll push you around. Like what in the world? What yeah. in the world? Um, so, so that's that's the last story I had to read. But I'd like to chat with you for just a few more minutes, minutes, if that's okay. Um, Absolutely. Since ha- have you done any other kind of uh, appearance things with with any other kind of creators or had any kind of collab like this before? No, this is my first time doing anything like this. It's just been me on my account forever and ever. <laughs> I'm honored. Cool. Well, thank you so much for for agreeing to do this. And likewise, this is our first time bringing someone who isn't like here here locally with us or part of our crew already bringing bringing them in. So um, I've been messaging you for a few days about the growing pains <laughs> of trying to get like the platform working and oh, yeah. doing the remote recording and that kind of stuff. But I think I think we've got that button up. That's been the biggest hurdle. Um, and uh, you were immediately so gracious and and agreed Absolutely. to do this and we're excited about it. And every time I've mentioned it to our followers, they're they're just so pumped about it. So they're gonna be so, so, so excited to see this. And I hope you're hope you're open to doing it again sometime. Absolutely, I want to do it again. And the crazy part is like some of my followers know because they also follow you, but a ton of my followers have no idea. They have no idea. I mentioned recording a podcast <laughs> once or twice because I actually got your message about it in the middle of one of my lives. I was live and I got the message on my phone. Nice. I just looked at it and was like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> like I lost my shit for a second. <laughs> then I got it back together and got my That's alive. awesome. And I've never like said exactly who. So I think a lot of my followers are gonna be surprised, but really into it for sure. For sure. 
I'm awesome. excited. Well, yeah, this I'm looking forward to having like a power team thing going on here. Yeah, it'll be, for it'll sure. be, we're going to take over great. TikTok. If it's still standing by the time we get this right. thing edited, by God, we're going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so one more thing I wanted to ask you about, because I'm curious. Um, well, two things. Mm-hmm. First, how do you go about like choosing the stories that you're going to read? Or how do you know if it's one that's like, yeah, I, I want to use this one. How does that process work for you? Based on the title. So do like, you, you know, know how you, you no, you open up Reddit and you know, the little, the, the feed you, I read the title and if the title catches my, my attention. Okay. Then I read the little, like that little first paragraph that you can see without actually having to click on the story. Mm-hmm. I read through that. And if the, the first few sentences catch my attention, I open the story, I open the camera, we start recording. So the, when I read the stories, it's the very nice. first time that I'm reading it and I'm hearing it. And yeah, sometimes I'll record a whole story and be like, yeah, no, we're not, we're not posting that. And start the process <laughs> all over again. <laughs> like I choose all my stories before my lives. And sometimes when I run out, I just run out of stories. And it's like, all right, y'all, I don't have no more because I don't feel like scrolling for something to catch yeah. my attention for the next 30 minutes. But that's how it works. And yeah, if the title yeah. doesn't jump out at me, then yeah. So be creative, guys. <laughs> be creative with your yeah, title. Well, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. And, and with your intros, too, because it, it has to be well written. And luckily, so I blind read mm-hmm. or blind react, too. But like uh, Tony and Candy and even Caden, uh, you know, we've we've got a team that will go through and farm those stories and get them all chosen and prepared. So the first time ever I'm ever seeing the title even is whenever mm-hmm. I'm reading it out loud and recording it. But I, I do really, really strongly believe that the blind react is the way to go because you're catching all that raw reaction and emotion. Yeah. And I feel like if I read it ahead of time, I would I would I'd have too much time to think and it really? would it would kind of destroy the the visceral nature of it. Well, and there will be times when I'll record something and then two days later, I'm like, oh, damn, this could be a solution to that. But, you know, yep. it's we will talk about it in comments. They'll, yep. they'll handle yep. that. Yep. Go. Just go. So doing as many of these stories as you do. um. Do you feel like it ever weighs you down? Do you feel like you, you, you know, cause you absorb a little bit of it emotionally when you read a story and you really put yourself into it. And after you read so many of them, do you feel like you get emotionally or mentally taxed at some point? Absolutely. Absolutely. Sometimes after I've posted a few videos in a day, it's like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm just relaxed. I'm going to take a couple of days off because my emotions are going up and down because this story was really, really funny. This video almost made me cry. Yeah. This story just pissed me the hell off. I'm ready to beat up everybody in the family, you know, and my emotions are all over the place where I'll get off and I'm irritated. And it's like, why? It's literally 9 a.m. Are you angry at breakfast? Why? What's wrong with you? So it definitely does take a toll on my emotions sometimes. And I have to just take a step back, do something that I like, reset myself. I'll give myself a break. I'll sometimes I'll even just go live just to talk for a little bit, you know, just to, just to yeah. talk and get some pressure off my, off of me. Cause I don't, I don't have no friends. <laughs> I do not have uh, any friends. But... <laughs> is that, so... is that my choice? Yes. Or just because you moved or, uh, or gotcha. No, it's my choice. I don't like people cause people are dishonest. They tell you what they, what they think you want to hear. They, you know, everyone to me sometimes have a, an ulterior motive and things are too hard out here for people to be trying to keep each other over at every turn. So before I give you the opportunity to do me wrong, I'm just going to take my distance. And that's just kind of through personal experience. Yeah. So I just, I tend to stick to myself. I've got like three people that I may talk to on a regular. Other than that, I really, really stick to myself. I'm a homebody in all definition. Like I love being in my house. (laughs) Away from that's everybody. good though i i think one of the most important things you can do in life is get to a point where you're happy with you and don't need anybody else right not needing anybody Absolutely. else is a is a strength uh, yeah and i understand exactly where you're coming from and especially the kind of stories that we read it just kind of reinforces the whole yeah. not trusting people because yeah. like I, I don't even know if i trust you we're seeing dad. the worst of the that's worst just- <laughs> like I don't know, Daddy, because I read this story where this girl's dad did her wrong, and I don't even know if I like. I think you should go home. I don't know if I like you that much right now. <laughs> it's his thing. No, my boyfriend. Like everything's is. really raw, and I just need some time to process. 
Yeah, my poor boyfriend gets the, the tail end of everything. Because I've been reading some stories and it's like, I wish my boyfriend would. I'd have to beat him the f*** up. I really would. <laughs> and people in the comments are <laughs> rushing to his defense. He would never. Your boyfriend loves you so much. And it's like, he better. He better. <laughs> and then I'll get off. And he's like, hey, baby, hello. I mean, I'm sorry, baby. Hi. I love uh, you so much. How you doing? <laughs> I'm putting through it. <laughs> He's like, do do I need to be hiding? Do I need to be hiding now, or is it safe? Is it you know what's right. what's the environment like in here? Is it, do I need to get the Nerf swords? He was Where are we looking at? at me? No, we <laughs> actually have battles with the Nerf guns. We do. I'll hide in the house and leave out a note. Yes, like, I need nice. To, we need to get some pressure off, so we're gonna have some fun. Loser has to buy dinner. May the odds be ever in your favor, <laughs> and whoever gets hit gets hit. <laughs> I'll be hiding, you know, in a closet somewhere. <laughs> and he's definitely he stepped up. He's definitely like he knows that when I come out of the office and I'm angry, it's not him. <laughs> I'm probably a hungry or thirsty. Again, just need some time to calm down. But he's <laughs> he's awesome. He's awesome. He's who we like, baby. I would never do that to you. I'm glad you know. I am glad you know, cause sir, you have me in jail and you in the hospital. Don't do that. Don't do that to the both of us. Think about me. <laughs> Think about me. Don't do that. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> it does. It does bring up some interesting conversations with your partner. You know what I mean? You'll read some of these stories and you'll be like, Absolutely. I just can't imagine doing that to another human being, especially when you're supposed to love them. Um, and I, I call it drama trauma. There are times mm -hmm. whenever, whenever we'll, We've been running hard and reading a lot of stories and if they're heavy or if there's just, you know, very dramatic, there are times when I just kind of become numb to it and I call it drama trauma. And then if I walk in the door at home and there's mm -hmm. any kind of drama going on with the kids or whatever else at home, I'm like, I, I, I don't have any more room to put I any more don't. drama. So the meter is full all the time, <laughs> all the time. And I try to get like people who send me like personal stories and stuff. I try to get them to understand that too. Like sometimes y'all, y'all stories be too much. Like I understand wanting to share your story, yeah. but sometimes, sometimes no, it'd be too much. <laughs> like it feels, it fills me up and I'm just not able to post that. I'm not able to read that or like it hit me a little bit too hard or sometimes they're just yeah. not interesting enough. And I don't feel like accepting that into my arsenal of drama by reading it and putting it on the internet. <laughs> like, because even though it's not a whole lot of, you know, excitement, it's still trauma and it's still, you know, emotions tied to the story that even though I'm not going to post it by simply reading it, it attaches itself to me. And now I'm carrying around yeah. this emotional weight. So it's like, sometimes you guys, I need y'all to be patient because I can't read every email that I got to be walking around mad at the dog yep. for no reason. <laughs> like, so <laughs> Yeah, I'm be yelling at who put the floor on the floor, you know? So we, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. you. You do take a piece of it with you every time you read it. And that does, it's got to go somewhere. I, it's it, at some point it has to release somewhere out there. So Absolutely. thank goodness you and I both have, you know, rock solid partners to be able to, to walk, walk on this journey with us. Otherwise Absolutely. it'd be really, really tough. Very difficult. Yeah. Okay, uh, sure. thank you again so much for hanging out with me and for being our very first remote guest yeah. on on this podcast. I'm really looking forward to getting into the edit and getting this thing chopped up and see how it goes. But this was awesome. It was a great time. Um, and yeah, I think we definitely have to do it again sometime. So Absolutely. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, yeah. Beyond beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. So your your uh, your user on TikTok is is just at Beyond Beautiful. Yes, with two L's. Beyond beautiful, two L's. Definitely go check her out. Um, does does AITA stories has a very different style and take, um, and love love everything that she's putting out there. So if you're not a fan already, you need to become a fan right now for sure. So uh, and again, beyond beautiful. Thank you so much for Yay. being here. Greatly, greatly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come do this with me. And hopefully, it'll be the first of many. Right. Oh, for sure. Thank you for having me. I'm I'm honored. I really appreciate you reaching out to me and asking me to be here. I loved every moment of it. This was so fun and we're definitely going to have to do it again. Hell yeah. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> well, you heard it there. She said it. It's going to happen again. 